Hello friends, it's not only for historians or history buffs, learning the history of science gives you a basic understanding of the mindset of great scientists, how they came up with their experiments, how they conducted research, so let's get started. Virology is not as new as you may think. Yes, the discovery of viruses as distinct from other living organisms is new, but viruses infected ancient people and ancient people carried out active research into the cause and prevention of viral diseases. Actually, the first written record of a viral infection is a hieroglyph from Memphis, an ancient capital of ancient Egypt. This hieroglyph was drawn approximately 1400 BC. As you can see on the screen, there is a priest whose leg show the clinical sign of paralytic poliomyelitis. Uh, about 1000 BC, smallpox was endemic in China, so they developed a practice to limit it. It's called variolation. They took the dried crust, the scabs from a smallpox lesion, grind it to powder, and it was blown into the nose, as you can see on the screen, blown into the nose of a person who would be variolated. This person would contract a mild form of the disease. Uh, then he would be immune. Later, it was modified, and they would inoculate the bus uh, from a lesion into a scratch on the arm of the person. Fast forward to 17th century AD. Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek, a cloth shop owner, he wanted to see the fabric better, uh, to determine the quality of the cloth, so he made magnifying lenses. Finally, he constructed the first microscope, the one you see on the screen. Anthony used his microscope to study the microscopic world and explore microbes. He called them animalcules, from a Latin word meaning tiny animal. In 1796, Edward Jenner de uh, developed the first vaccine, the small box vaccine. This is the first viral vaccine. At the age of seven, uh, Edward Jenner was subjected to variolation. It nearly killed him. So he wanted to find a better way. He heard that when dairy maids are infected with cowpox, they somehow become protected from smallpox. After observing and thinking, uh, on May 14th, 1796, he took the fluid from a lesion, a lesion of cowpox, uh, from a dairy maid called Saranams, and uh, inoculated a young boy, James Phipps, with this fluid. After some time, he performed variolation on James Phipps. He took the fluid from a, um, a small box patient lesion and uh, inoculated it into James Phipps. The boy didn't have any reaction to variolation. He was already immunized against small box due to the previous inoculation, previous infection with cow box. This is a drawing representing Jenner and Sarah Nims. Okay. In the 1880s, in France, Louis Pasteur published his germ theory that microorganisms can lead to diseases. They can cause diseases. This idea was, taking, uh, was taken up by Robert Koch in Germany. He began to think which microorganism causes which disease. So he isolated specific bacteria that caused particular diseases as TP and cholera and came up with criteria to establish a causative relationship between a microbe and a disease called Koch's postulates. They deserve their own video. Back in France, Pasteur was developing a vaccine for rabies. He chose it because it infects both animals and humans, so he can perform his experiments on animals. He was met with a problem. Pasteur couldn't isolate the organism 
causing the disease. He didn't know at the time that it was a viral disease. This didn't stop him. He knew that rabies was a disease of the nervous system. So he took part of a rabbit dog brain, an infected dog brain, and put it, inoculated into a healthy dog. The healthy dog became rabid and died. He started working with rabbits as they were less dangerous. He took parts, cross sections of the spinal cord of an infected rabbit, of a rabid rabbit, and let them dry in a flask, in a moist, free environment. With experimenting, he found out that their virulence gradually decreased until it disappeared. The longer the cross-section stayed in the flask, the less virulent it becomes. He injected these spinal cord sections into an exposed dog uh, in a certain order. The older first, then the newer and fresher. This dog did not develop rabies, so he came up with a protocol to fight rabies. On July 6, 1885, a boy, Joseph Mister, was brought to Bastar. The boy was bitten by a rabbit dog. This dog bit him 14 times. Bastar wasn't a doctor, so he asked the help of a doctor, uh, Dr. Grinder, to inoculate the child. He, uh, or they injected the child with a rabid spinal cord sections. They started with the old ones. They started with the old ones, the less virulent first, then injected fresher and fresher, the more virulent. A total of 13 injections. The boy didn't develop rapies. In 1885, he repeated the experiment again with a 15 years old boy. He was successful again, told the whole world. People bitten by rabid animals came from all over France and abroad. Pasteur's vaccine is considered the second viral vaccine and the first attenuated viral vaccine. In 1892, Dmitry Ivanovsky, a Russian botanist, conducted an experiment that was key to the discovery of viruses. But the man who paved the way to Ivanovsky's experiment was Adolf Meyer. In 1886, Adolf Meyer published a paper. He named it Mosaic Disease of Tobacco. He described the symptoms of this disease in detail, but mainly the pattern of light and dark green on the leaves of the tobacco plant, hence comes the name mosaic. In the picture is a healthy plant and a plant infected by a tobacco mosaic disease. Here is the dark green spots and the pale green spots. Uh, Meyer took parts of the deceased plant, the plant infected with tobacco mosaic disease, he crushed it in a porcelain dash and then took the sap, the fluid. Without any filtration, he inoculated the sap in a healthy plant. So he took the sap without filtration, inoculated it in a healthy plant, observed the healthy plant. The healthy plant was infected with tobacco mosaic disease. The healthy plant got infected. The healthy plant got infected. He re then repeated the experiment and again took the sap. But this time he passed the sap through a double layer filter paper. He took the sap, passed it through a double layer filter paper, then inoculated it in a healthy plant. Then he said three wrong claims. First, that the plant stayed healthy that the, after filtration, the sap was clear and wrongly, mistakenly concluded that the infectious agent is 
a bacteria. Dmitry Ivanovsky, our Russian botanist, had no confidence in Meyer's experiments, so he decided to repeat them. In 1892, he took parts of a deceased plant, crushed it in a porcelain dish, took the sap, but this time he filtered it through a Chamberland porcelain filter. This filter is also called a candle filter. It's a filter designed by Charles Champerlain. It has a poor size, so small that it doesn't allow even the smallest bacterium to pass. It's so fine that the smallest bacterium can't go through it. He took the filtrate and inoculated it in a healthy plant. The plant was infected. Ivanovsky mistakenly concluded that the disease was of bacterial origin. It's either a very small bacterium or a toxin. Meaning the filtrate wasn't clear, but either contained a bacterium or a soluble toxin, even though he was unable to cultivate any bacteria from his Chamberland filtrate. In 1898, Martinez Pyrneck was the first to develop the modern idea of the virus. He worked on tobacco mosaic disease. Uh, his work can really be insightful into the mind process of scientists. Pyrneck performed several experiments on the sap of an infected tobacco plant. He took parts of the plant, crushed it, took the sap, filtered the sap through a porcelain chamberland filter and searched the sap for bacteria. He couldn't find any. He couldn't find any bacteria. But the sap remained infective. When the sap was inoculated, when the filtrate was inoculated through a pravaz syringe into a healthy plant, the plant or this healthy plant was infected. This healthy plant was infected not just a leaf or two, many leaves of this healthy plant, many and also many branches of this healthy plant were infected. Not only this, when again he took a piece of this plant, of this newly infected plant, crushed it, took the sap and injected again a drop in a number of plants, all of these healthy plants also became infected. He thought if he took all of these newly infected plants, again took the sap, crushed it, repeated the process, he could infect an infinite number of plants. He concluded that the infection is not caused by a microbe but by a contagium vivium fluidum, a contagious living fluid that is able to replicate itself inside plant cells. He thought this agent had a liquid nature uh, to be able to pass through the Chamberland filter. In the same year, 1898, Frederick Loeffler and Powell Frosch showed that foot and mouse disease in cattle, it's a disease that affects cattle, is caused by this newly found, this newly discovered infectious agent. In 1901, a doctor in the American army, a physician in the American army named Walter Reed confirmed the theory of Carlos Finley. The man who had the theory is called Carlos Finley, a Cuban doctor. His theory was that yellow fever disease is a viral disease and it is transmitted by a certain mosquito, by a mosquito, not through direct contact. In 1915, Frederick Twart and Flex Darrell were first to recognize viruses that infect bacteria, viruses that were specific to bacteria. Uh, he named them, or Flex Darrell named them, bacteriophages, eaters, 
of bacteria. So, let's have a quick recap of our lecture. The first written record of a viral infection, 1400 BC uh, in Memphis, Egypt, uh, 1000 BC, Chinese uh, invented variolation, Anthony Van Leeuwenhoek from 1632 to 1723, he was the man that invented the first microscope. Edward Jenner created the first vaccine, the smallpox vaccine. In the 1880s, Robert Koch made Koch's postulate. Louis Pasteur made two things, his germ theory and a vaccine for rabies, our main things. Dmitry Ivanovsky in 1892, reviewed Meyer's experiment on tobacco mosaic disease and performed an experiment that was key into the discovery of viruses. Then came Martinez Pyrnek. He was the first to develop the modern idea of the virus. He concluded that the infectious agent is not a bacterium as the sap appeared clear and it's not a toxin as it can reproduce itself inside the living plant. He called it contagium vivum fluidum. Contagium as it is the infective agent. Vivum, it's alive. It's not diluted by further uh, transfer. It can reproduce itself inside living plants. Fluidum, he thought it had uh, a liquid nature uh, and this liquid nature would be enabling it to pass through the Chamberland filter. In 1898, Frederick Loeffler and Paul Frosch showed that the foot and cattle disease is caused by, the, by this newly found infectious agent. In 1901, Walter Reed asserted, confirmed the theory of Carlos Finley, and in 1915, Frederick Twart and Flex Deherel uh, discovered bacteriophages. I hope you were able to have a basic idea of how the thought process of scientists work and I hope that you would research those topics and those scientists further. Thank you and goodbye.